First, let me say how wonderful it is to be here, to see all of your faces. It's interesting to me the time of year. It's nothing more than, than man's tradition. We find no place in our Bible that says to celebrate the birth of Jesus with Christmas on December 25th. There's, there's no commandment. There's nothing to it, but people all around the world choose as a man's tradition to honor Jesus and celebrate His birthday tomorrow. I think it's a wonderful tradition. I look at it and I think about why people choose to do that, why the holidays tend to change people, the way that they think, the way that they act, the life almost that they lead for a month or two. or It's just interesting to me. I've said many times it's my favorite time of year, and that's the reason why is because the holiday season tends to change people. People tend to notice more of the ideals that Jesus puts forth in His Bible. I think that's really interesting. I think people tend to open their hearts more. That's what the interesting part to me is. Each, each person in the world will have their own traditions and, and values and, and things that they've done all their life, maybe with their family or, or, or something like that, that uh, is important to them. We call those things sentimental to us. They mean something. Many people have ornaments that hang on their Christmas tree. That means something to them. They've gathered them through their life with their family, and it reminds them of those things and those parts of their life that were important. Many times the holidays bring a great deal of emotion to people, some good and some bad, some painful, some joyous. The holidays mean different things to different people, but for the most part, they have a way of touching the hearts of men. I think that's why they're my favorite time of year. The heart's exactly what I want to talk about today. You know your heart is only about the size of your fist. That's it. You know it weighs less than a pound. It weighs 10 to 12 ounces or so. But you know how many times it beats? It beats roughly 100,000 times a day to push blood all through your body. That's 60 to 80 times a minute, more than once a second for most people. It pumps about a gallon and a half of blood all throughout your body, all to the soft tissue and the organs, all throughout everywhere that your body goes. And it's vital to your existence that it does that. What does the blood provide you? It provides you with vitamins, provides your body with nutrients, provides your body with oxygen. You know what happens when the oxygen's cut off from any part of your body, from any of those tissues in all of your body? They die. They go away. If the heart doesn't beat, as much as the heart needs to beat and it doesn't supply blood everywhere that you need blood, those parts of your body die. If your heart doesn't beat at all, you die. I think that's really interesting, the way that God created my heart, where He put it. He put it right in the center of me so it could equally go everywhere and permeate to all of my being. For all the work that the heart does, and it works, and it works hard every day, it seems very basic to us the way that we live. We just wake up and live. How many times a day do you think about the work that your heart does? Most of the time for most people it's zero. You just don't think about it, you just live. But it works hard. It works hard. God's made it so incredible. We boil it down. You can boil down the heart into three basic functions and three basic things about your heart. And the first one is structure, the way that God built it. 
There's an electricity from your brain to your heart that tells it how to beat. And then there's what they call plumbing. So the blood can flow throughout your body and travel. And I want to break down each one of those things about your heart. The very first basic part of your heart is the way that God built it. Do you know what God did when he built your heart? The first thing he did was he figured out a way to protect it because he understood it's the most vital organ that we have in all of our body. So the very first thing that you have is a sternum that protects anything from hitting it. When we sing the national anthem, most people put their hand over their heart and they put it over the left side, but that's not really where your heart is. It's really right in the middle. It kind of tilts to the left a little bit, but it's really right in the middle. It's right behind your sternum. So that that bone can protect your heart and protect anything from getting to it. You know what else he did? Do you know God encased it with a lining called the pericardium on the inside? So nothing gets to it? So nothing affects it? See, God's taking measures to protect that which is vital to you. That which is important to you. I find that really interesting. If you would, turn over and look at the fourth chapter of Proverbs. We're going to see something here about our heart and understand why it's so vital to us. In the fourth chapter of Proverbs, in verse 23, Solomon says, Keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Now another version I believe says, From your heart flows the spring of life. Everything that is life flows from your heart. Everything it is about you that makes you live, that keeps you warm, that can, controls the temperature of your body, that everything that's important to you comes from your heart. It flows the spring of life. But I also think it's interesting that Solomon uses those words here. Because in John chapter 11 and in John chapter 14, Jesus says that He is life. He calls Himself life. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Out of your heart flows the spring of life. Out of your heart will flow Jesus if you choose to place Him there. Your heart is the most vital organ that you have. Like it or don't. Jesus says, He's life. Mm. I love that. I love that. Because without Him, there is no life. Without my heart, there is no life. And out of my heart, whether it pumps Jesus or whether it doesn't, will choose to me whether or not I have life. Life eternal, of course. Turn over and look at the fourth chapter of Mark. We'll be here a little longer. Jesus teaches in a parable in the fourth chapter of Mark, probably one that we all know. We'll pick up in verse 14, and he says, The sower soweth the word, and these are by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their heart. See, Satan's job is to take Jesus out of your heart. Jesus says in John chapter 1 that he's the Word. We can establish that. That's in John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. In the 14th verse, the Word became flesh. Jesus is the Word. Satan works diligently to try to take Jesus from your heart where it's sown. Verse 16, And these are likewise which are sown on the stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things enter... Entering it, choke the word, and it become unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. You see, my heart 
is the ground where Jesus is sown. I can have bad ground and I can have good ground. I can put my heart on Him and things will grow from my ground. His life will spring forth from my heart and go throughout my body. Or I can have bad ground where I plant Jesus and it goes nowhere. Satan just takes it out of there. Blood doesn't go to my body and I cease to live eternally. Your heart is the very ground where Jesus will be sown into your life. Mm. Seems vital to me. Seems important to me. Seems like the most important organ that I have throughout my entire body. The way that he built it, his ability to permeate it, seems important to me. I just want to look up and say, God, please give me fertile soil. Do whatever it is that you need to do, God, to give me fertile soil. Let me be rich. Let me have vitamins and minerals. Everything that my body needs to protect the life, the Jesus that went in there. Help me, God, to put him in there and give me whatever it is that I need to protect him while he's in there. It's vital. The way that God builds your heart and the way that you choose to use it is, is vital to you. God says in Jeremiah 17 that the heart is foolish and that it is deceitful. That's verse 9 and 10. Why do you think God made something so important and so vital to us foolish and deceitful? That doesn't seem to make sense to me. But I think I know why He did it. I think God wants to find people that love Him. I think God just wants to find people that love Him. If my heart is foolish, how does it know when to beat? My brain has to tell it. That's where the electricity part of your heart comes in. You know what happens if your brain doesn't tell your heart to beat right? It don't beat right. And that's really bad. They go in there a lot of times and they put in a pacemaker because they need something else to tell your heart when to beat right. I need my brain to tell my heart to beat. I need my brain not only to tell my heart when to beat, I need to tell it exactly what speed to beat at. What if it doesn't beat fast enough? Then I don't get enough blood throughout my body. It doesn't pump enough. What if it beats too fast? Then I have a heart attack. I go into cardiac arrest. My brain has to be exactly on the beat that my heart needs. And it has to send that exact signal I find that amazing. I find it amazing. So how do I tell my brain to send a signal to my heart about Jesus? Well, how do I not? How do I look at the world? How do I look at the evidences that we have? How do I learn about the IPRA document and not understand it's factual? How do, I, how do I look at the algae that's formed in the bottom of the Red Sea in the shape of chariots and not understand that Moses parted the Red Sea? How do I look at the Egyptian writings on the bottom of Mount Sinai and not understand that that's where they were? How do I walk outside my front door and not understand that God created it? How do I look at my kids and not understand that God put something special in my life? How do I not tell my heart how to beat? I'm just not looking. If I'm not telling my heart to beat with Jesus, I'm just not looking for Him. You can't miss Him. If you just look around, you can't miss Him. Look at Romans chapter 1. God's going to tell us the very same thing in the first chapter of Romans. I love this scripture. Look at verse 20 in Romans 1. Paul says, For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, 
even His eternal power and Godhead, so that we are without excuse. If my brain isn't telling my heart to beat Jesus, I have no excuse. He's done everything that He can do to provide for me every fact that I need to know that my brain needs to tell my heart to beat Jesus at that exact rhythm that Jesus was. I have no excuse. Jesus is worthy of me telling my heart how to beat. Jesus is worthy of me telling my heart how to beat exactly the way that He wants it to so that my body can provide oxygen all over. That's the plumbing part of my heart. Your body is really an amazing thing. I don't understand the arteries and the veins and the capillaries and all the ways that it works and how the blood flows. And People go to school for a long time to learn about that. But what I do understand is I need all those things for blood to go to all the soft tissue of my body. <coughs> what happens if blood only flowed from the waist up? My legs would die. Those tissues down there need blood. They need the oxygen and the nutrients and the vitamins. They would die. What if it was just my toes that didn't get blood? Well, they would die. What about my fingers? Well, they would die. Well, those are just little parts of my body. Are they really important? I mean, do I really need them? What if I didn't have my toes? Would it be that big a deal? Well, it could be. I, it kind of helps with balance when you walk. What if I didn't have my fingers? They're just, I mean, they're little. Would it be that big a deal? Well, it could be. It'd be hard for me to pick stuff up. What if I didn't have my ears? They're little. Would that be a problem? Well, it could be. It'd be really hard to hear. Take any little bitty part of your body and understand how important and how valuable it is to you. What if I didn't have my eyes? What if I couldn't see? Hmm. I start to think about that differently. That seems more vital to me that I'm able to see. Each little thing makes up how we are and the way that God made us. Each little bitty part of our body, God finds valuable. And He put our heart there to pump blood to all those little bitty parts. And He gave us all these little bitty arteries and capillaries to go all the way down here to the end so that all that works. And it all works the way that He wants it to. I think it's fascinating that God uses the head-body analogy for Jesus. Do you think all the little bitty parts of Jesus' body are important? Boy, I do. I don't even care which one I am. Make me a finger, Jesus. Let me be in your body. Make me a toe, Jesus. Pump blood to me so that your toes work right. I just want to be part of your body. I find that really fascinating. What if I never opened my Bible? What if I could never hear the Word because my ears didn't work right? Mm. What if I never used it to help people? Do you think Jesus uses every single part of His body? I think He does. I think He uses every single part of His body to help people. And I wonder if I use every single part of my body <coughs> to help people, to use it the way that Jesus wants me to use it. I wonder if I look at my body and I compare it to His. I bet Jesus moves blood with His heart to every part of His body. I wonder if I move Jesus, if the spring of life moves throughout me to every part of my body, so that I use my feet for Jesus, so that I use my hands for Jesus, so that I use my ears for Jesus, so that I use my lips for Jesus. Hmm.
Those are small, but how valuable are they to save lost people? I wonder if I just take things for granted sometimes and I don't understand the way that the blood flows through my body and how valuable each little part of it is. See, I think maybe that's what the holiday does sometimes too. Maybe it makes people understand how valuable the things that they have are. I wonder if we see how valuable the things that God's put in our life are. I wonder if we take a look around and we see some people that are less fortunate, that don't have all the things that we do, and we value the things that we have more because of it. It warms our heart, some of the things that we do. The heart's very basic. The heart's very basic. And I see that sometimes it's foolish and sometimes it's deceitful to me and I wonder why God gave it to me the way that He did. Well, God, if, if my heart's not smart, why'd you give it to me like that? Why didn't you make it easier for me? If my heart's going to lead me the wrong way, God, why'd you give it to me like that? You know out of your heart comes every emotion that you have. Your brain releases hormones and things like that to, when you get those emotions, but boy, they seem to come from the heart to me. It's what makes you hurt. It's what gives you joy. Every feeling that you have to me tends to come from the heart. I find that really interesting, that it controls my emotion. I find it really interesting that I spend all day watching the Hallmark Channel because it makes me feel good. I'm not the only one either. <laughs> I find it really interesting that I look at my Bible and God gives me all these emotions when I put Jesus in my heart. Those emotions range from the most joyous thing in the whole wide world to the most painful thing in the whole wide world. Why'd you give me my heart like that, God? And God said, because I needed you to understand that every time in your life that you choose to go out and do the things that I don't want you to do, I need you to understand that you swung the hammer to put the nail through my hand. And I need it to hurt. So that when you understand that I'm the one who saved your life and gave you an opportunity to live eternally with me, that it will feel better than any emotion you've ever felt in your entire life. It can't be recreated. You can't recreate that. The emotion that God gives you should be one that can't be falsified. Give me truth, God. If that's what you want, make it hurt when I sin. Make me know that I'm swinging the hammer that put you to death. You took my sin and put it on that cross and got rid of it. You spilled the blood that washes it away. Let me know, God. Make me hurt. But please, God, give me the joy that comes with it when I know that you've given me an opportunity to go and sin no more so that I can live eternally with you. I can deal with that. I can deal with that. You know why I like the holidays? Why I like this time of year? Because that feeling... And knowing those emotions in my heart are what makes life worth living. That's why I like this time of year. And it just brings that to light. I pray that I go through 12 months of knowing that that's what makes life worth living. That God has a purpose. I had a really smart guy tell me one time, 
If you can do anything in this world except preach, do it. He was a preacher. And I find as I get older, it's harder and harder and harder for me to do anything in this world but preach. God wants us to go preach. He wants our heart to push blood into every part of our body so that we use everything we have and everything that's about us to go out into the world and preach to people and get them from loss to saved. God wants to use every part of His body to bring people to Jesus. Mm. Mm. If you haven't put Jesus in your heart, go outside. Look around. If you're not telling your heart to beat and spring forth life, go look around. Look at your kids. If you don't have them, look at mine. <laughs> God loves you. He wants you to be saved, and He wants you to help save other people. If there's anything that the church can do for anyone, let us know as together we stand and sing. Right, Brian, look, it's been nailed.